Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and Board of Assessors um, to discuss the appointment of the next member of the Board of Assessors. It is 7 p.m. on July 1st, and I do call this meeting to order. Um, just a reminder to everyone that this is being filmed, so uh, speak loudly and smile when you're at the microphone. Um, I, I would like to note that our colleague, Mr. Kevin Grayley, has recused himself from this process, so he will not be joining us tonight. Um, and I will now turn this over to our town council, uh, Mr. Doug Heim, to discuss the process. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to briefly go over the process for the uh, joint body's uh, consideration of the applicants that it has before it. Uh, as a general matter tonight, um, on anything but the most uh, minor of procedural motions, you'll proceed by roll call votes in an abundance of caution with the uh, relevant state statute and our past practice here in Arlington. The process will be opened by uh, each uh, individual who submitted a timely uh, application for the joint body's consideration be given an opportunity to make a brief statement in support of their candidacy. Such statements are not required for a nomination, however, may be made. Following any and all applicant uh, statements, any member of the joint body may move to receive nominations formally. Upon a second, the joint body shall take a roll call vote to formally receive nominations. Once the nominations are open, each member may nominate any of the qualified applicants. It's my understanding that all of these applicants meet the minimum qualification for serving as the interim assessor. Each nominee should receive a second to be placed before the joint body for voting. There's no limit on the number of nominees that may be placed before the joint body for consideration, but an applicant is not entitled to receive nomination just because they submitted an application. At that point in time, it will depend on how many nominees have been um, seconded by the board and will be before the board for their consideration. If there are only two nominees before the board, you'll proceed to what is essentially a final roll call vote. The quantum of votes needed to secure an appointment is a simple majority. In this case, it will be four. In the event of a tie, we have some tie contingencies whereby members of the joint body would be able to make statements in support of the person that they voted for and then take another vote, uh, another roll call vote to try and secure the majority. If at that point there's still a tie, we'll go back to the beginning and reopen the nomination process so that those candidates who were finalists and those candidates who may not have been nominated previously can all be considered by the board to see if a different outcome would be reached. If there are at least three nominees, we'll basically engage in a rounded voting process. The first round's purpose will be to identify two finalists who receive at least two votes from the board. Um, there are a couple of other contingencies that may come up depending on the votes, the number of nominees, but we should be able to walk through all those things. Um, the keys that I want to, uh, and then finally, uh, assuming that uh, we uh, have a simple majority for any one nominee. Uh, upon such simple majority vote, a member of the joint body should move that a majority vote has been reached and that that nominee would serve the vacant position, obtain a second, and then have a simple roll call vote to reflect that that is an accurate statement of the voting. It's just a precautionary measure to make sure everybody understands that they, that they agree that a simple majority has been reached. And at that point, uh, anyone may move to uh, adjourn the meeting. Uh, the only uh, piece that I want to have everybody keep in mind, aside from the roll call voting, is that if at any point in time a simple majority is reached, even in a preliminary round, if there are four votes in favor of one nominee, that nominee will have reached a simple majority and someone may move the majority. So just keep that in mind. If we have three nominees and it's a rounded process, if someone receives four votes, there's no point in going forward and having a, having a final round. Does anybody have any questions? I know that's a, a little bit... Uh, complex, but it's based, again, on the very uh, minimal requirements of Chapter 41 and Arlington's past practice in this area. I just had one question on dealing with the, the a majority of the votes. I think the question is, what happens if the member abstains and then you couldn't get the four votes, you could only get the three, but you would still have a majority of the people eligible in voting? So absent someone um, essentially recusing themselves from the process, and I don't mean a formal recusal in the way that Mr. Greeley has done, but someone basically leaving the 
room and the body no longer being consistent of the six members who are present, you need to have a simple majority of the folks who are present. And ab an abstention will not, in my view, uh, constitute a simple majority of, of the board. You need to get, in short, you need to get four votes tonight. Seeing no further questions, I would like to thank uh, Doug for all of his work on this. He's uh, put in quite a few hours over the past few weeks, and um, I'm very thankful for his guidance. Um, and before we get started, um, I meant to do this before, I um, hope that everyone will join me in a moment of silence for uh, Jack Lanzalotti, um, who's the ne nephew of Dominic Lanzalotti, who um, works for the town, who uh, died tragically with his girlfriend in Boston last week. Thank you. Thank you very much, and our prayers go out to the Lanzalotti family. Um, so I will now ask for all of the uh, applicants to uh, make statements. I hope that you will keep them to three minutes or under, and uh, we will do this in alphabetical order. So we'll start with uh, Joseph Bastardi. Please, yeah, just come up to the microphone. Um, Talk about yourself, um, why you believe you're fit to be Joe the next. Bastardi. I live in Arlington, obviously, uh, since uh, 08 or 06, and um, I was a town meeting member for one uh, term and um, just wanted to participate further. <laughs> so I thought that, you know, I have some skills that could. You know, Great. Do that, so. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Robert Greeley. First of all, I'm glad I was in assessing and not law. <laughs> I didn't understand any of that, Doug. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, my name is Bobby Greeley. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Arlington. Uh, my undergraduate and graduate degrees are from Babson. Excuse me. Um, I have been in the assessing profession for the last 30 years. Uh, I originally was elected in 1985. Uh, to this board here in Arlington in 1987. I then proceeded to uh, take over as director of assessments. Uh, I also have served uh, 15 years, 1988 um, to 2003, uh, on the board of assessors in the city of Somerville. Uh, during my tenure with the guidance of the board of assessors, uh, we were able to complete uh, nine triennial certifications uh, most important of which was the fact that they were done on a timely basis. Uh, to be honest, uh, over the last three decades here in Arlington, in a lot of ways, our office uh, has become a model that the Department of Revenue on more than one occasion uh, recommends to people. Uh, I always have been a believer in doing um, in-house revaluations uh, with minimal outside consultation uh, in that period of time, uh, from 87 through 2011 when I retired, uh, I think if the truth is known, the board and myself, we saved this town roughly uh, $2 million. Uh, almost every three years, if you had to bring in an outside firm uh, to do all of your revaluation, uh, residential income and commercial and industrial as well as personal property, uh, you're averaging about $350,000. Uh, historically, what we did is, when I say in-house, all of the residential was handled by us. Uh, we then may bring in on, a, on the third year or the triennial basis the outside firm who would help us uh, with some of the commercial and industrial and with some of the uh, personal property. Uh, currently, as you know, uh, the director of assessments position has been vacant for the last 10 weeks. Uh, board of assessors position has been vacant for the past five weeks. Uh, so based on all of the qualifications and the experience that I have in the assessing profession, I do believe that I would be able to fill the current vacancy very well with my, from all of my experience until the next general election. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Mr. Quinn. I don't, Patrick Quinn. I'm a business owner in Arlington, a resident of Arlington. Uh, 
overview. I, I serve as a board member on the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. I'm a trustee at the Insurance Library in Boston. I'm on the MAPE Steering Committee for the Commonwealth Auto Reinsurers. Uh, Captain Square Business Association member. I'm a board member of Armstrong Ambulance, supporter of the Arlington Food Pantry. In insurance, we do a lot. Our standard assessment model of buildings and homes is Marshall and Swift, which I believe is a standard for the assessors throughout the state. Uh, we do quarterly reviews with Marshall and Swift and then yearly updates with them. I've been doing those since 1995. I'm very familiar with Marshall and Swift and how they value uh, buildings. Uh, as a small business owner, I'm very familiar with managing multiple, f multiple facets of my business between human resources, sales, you know, sometimes I'm the plumber. <laughs> it, it all depends. Uh, I'm on the payroll, the whole deal. Uh, as I've been looking into the assessing department in Arlington, uh, there's a long history of stable professional department, the Department of Revenue, again, cites it as, a, as an exemplary department, in a, and they recommend it to other departments. I called some other towns that about Arlington, and their assessor's office all spoke very highly of, of the Arlington assessor's office. Uh, the, uh, Brief history of the board. I know the board's always had a diverse makeup, and it's usually had a small someone from the business community or a town resident on the board uh, for the board of assessors. And the board of assessors is to ensure the equitable distribution of the tax levy, which provides confidence to the electorate when considering overrides. Why me? I'm familiar with the cost approach as the primary approach for single family homes and also the commercial industrial tax basis. Uh, I'd like to work with the Board of Assessors, selectmen, other state officials uh, to increase our exemptions for the elderly, veterans, widows, etc. in Arlington, as Arlington's always been a leader in that throughout the state. Uh, and I'm a good listener and I collaborate well with other people. Thank you. Don't ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stephen Reynolds. I do not see that he is present. Um, Mr. Michael Stern. I thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak here tonight. Um, I think you've gotten my resume and uh, introductory letter and some research that I've done. Uh, I'll, I'll just repeat a little bit of that. Um, I'm a 14-year resident of the town. I'm a town meeting member. A uh, member of the Fiscal Resources Task Group. Um, I've been working with Ted Fields as far as bringing a, a, a co-working uh, space to the town. Um, I'm also the chair of the newly formed um, Vision 2020 uh, Education Task Group. Um, my advocacy um, really could be generally stated, Bob really is unquestionably the, the most uh, qualified person for this position. However, um, with that said, I would love to see the boards go in a different direction. Um, I think this is a great opportunity to bring some new ideas, bring in some new people. Um, the other elected boards of this town have had new folks, new ideas, there's fluidity of, of, um, of, of people. It makes it more democratic. So while Bob is clearly the, the most qualified person, I think it's more democratic to bring in some new folks and allow some other people to share in this office, which, as we all know, in about 30 years, has only seen about, I think, five or six people have gotten to see the inside of it. Um, so that's general advocacy for, I hate to say anyone but Bob. Because, and, and, I, and again, <laughs> Bob is, is uh, we just had a great conversation. We, we live in the household that the Greeley's grew up in at Tenor Farmer Road. My daughter um, had Ann Greeley as her kindergarten assistant. We're very fond of the Greeleys. Um, for myself, if you've looked at some of the research that I've contributed uh, to the Fiscal Re Resources Task Group and I've shown to Adam and a couple other folks, uh, which shows that um, there are some interesting aspects to valuations of commercial property in town. Uh, land value may be uh, not being, it may not be assessed uh, quite so well as residential. You see a lot of land assessed below $28 per square foot, which is uh, rather odd. Um, and I know that the, a lot of this is done by an outside group, Patriots Properties, 
If I have the opportunity to serve in this capacity, I'd love the opportunity to apply some uh, more due diligence to our vendor to make sure that they're doing uh, an accurate job. Because if you look at some of the data that I submitted to, you, to everyone, uh, there are properties that are substantially undervalued. And if, if, that, if that's accurate, the town is missing out on a lot of money. Um, so I would love to have your consideration. And again, no disrespect to the Greeleys, I just see it as an opportunity to bring in some, some new ideas and create a little transparency for a somewhat opaque office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, be before we um, move to receive nominations, I'd like to thank everyone who applied. I know that putting your name out for you know, the public scrutiny is not an easy task. Um, I think we can all agree on that. Um, so we all appreciate your willingness to serve. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jim? Yes, Ms. I'd like to nominate Robert Greeley. Second. Can we hold on a second? Can we yes. just, uh, can we move to formally accept nominations by roll call vote? Yes, of course. Sorry. We can. Um, would, would we I move to open nominations. Second. Sorry. Then Mr. I'll, I'll Mr. move Felix Mr. Greeley's name. Well, well, we have, I think we have to take a roll call vote on right. that first. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Faley? Yes. Ms. And Stanley O'Connor? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We'll now um, open up nominations. Oh, nominate <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second for Mr. Greeley. Well, I can move Mr. Stern. Second. We have a motion and a second for Mr. Michael Stern. I am seeing no further. Can we have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Second. Um, please. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Caro? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Field? Yes. Ms. Wynn Stanley? Yes. Yes. Now, with, um, with nominations closed, we'll now take a roll call vote where every member will state the name of their um, preferred candidate, and we'll see if we have a majority. Mr. Dunn? Uh, Mr. Greeley? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Do I go through the roll call? Yes, or? yes, okay. please. So, I I vote for Mr. Greeley. Okay. Mr. Kiro. Mr. Stern. Mr. Byrne. Mr. Greeley. Ms. Mahan. Mr. Greeley. Mr. Field. Mr. Greeley. Ms. Wynn Stanley. Mr. Mr. Greeley. I move to uh, accept a majority of the board in favor of Mr. Greeley. Second. Second. I know it's formal. If we can do one more. Yes, of course. So just to be clear, we have a uh, majority vote for Mr. Greeley's appointment um, to serve in the vacant position of the assessor. It's been seconded. And the record should reflect that Mr. Greeley should finish the term of the assessor until the April town election. Does the body accept this vote by a roll call? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Faley? Yes. Ms. Wynn Stanley O'Connor? Yes. Can I move to adjourn? Is that appropriate? <laughs> yes, Second. Is that a voice yeah, vote or a roll call? Let's do it by a roll call just to be <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations, Mr. Greeley.